Okay, now, as I've said earlier, one of the hardest breakfast foods I've ever had to cook in my life is the latka. Because I know if any of you are potato pancake fans like I am, uh, if you don't get it right, they'll lay in your stomach all day long. Remember, this was a, you know, my family and for our peasants. We came from peasant backgrounds and in Europe uh, a couple of hundred years ago, if you had some heavy grease and you had yourself a potato, uh, maybe a little meat to go with it. You had yourself uh, 3,000 calories, which would preserve you through the day. So that was the reason uh, they were heavy. I've kind of lightened up this version, and I'll show you what I do. I use my Cuisinart, and when you're making a latka, you have to sliver the potato. The potato is going to have to hold together. If you chop your potato, it's not going to hold together. So if you notice, I've set this, if you can get a focus, a close-up on this, um, you'll see that this thing is set for a slivery. And that's a, a crucial ingredient in the latka. Okay, we'll start here. You get, get this in here. And I like the Cuisinart. I know there's other ones. I've used other ones. You could use anything you want, but you just have to get that slivery. So, and again, you don't have to buy fancy potatoes. I recommend against buying the, uh, the Golden Yukons. If you're making latkes, buy the cheapest potato they sell at the store. This potato has been peeled. I'm going to put it in and I press hard. Second half of the potato. But again, I press hard to get that slivering. And an onion. Now, if you're going to use an onion, I like a little onion. If you're going to use it, just make sure you use a very small onion. Um, you know, that doesn't have a lot of strong taste because you can ruin your latka and overpower it with the onion. So I use just a little bit and again I sliver that. My final ingredient and uh, I buy these right after Passover because they're on sale and these things will last a year is your latka. And uh, the key ingredient in the latka is the matzo. So you take your matzo, break it up, put it in and this will give you a nice crisp latke. Okay, I would say for this, maybe I need just a hair more matzo. And again, here we go. All right, those are your those are your key ingredients. And now I'm going to put them in a plastic bowl and, and mix them. I know you're not supposed to turn your back on the camera, but remember I'm just an amateur. Okay. I take my knife. Now, some people will add a little pepper, um, some people will add a little salt. I like to add my salt afterwards, but again, I'm going to pull up. Now, if you look, if you look in the bottom of this, if I could get a close-up, you see how my latka is slivered? That is absolutely essential to the, the latka. Because if you don't, when you go to flip these things, and you have to flip them, they will absolutely, positively fall apart on you, and then it, it just doesn't come out right. So again, slivered, and now I'm going to go to the, I'm going to mix this bad boy up. And again, I've got three flavors in here. I've got my matzo, I've got my slivered potato and a light flavor of onion. Light. Okay. Again, I always rely on my cast iron for a number of things. So You want to have this burner hot. You want to have this thing as hot as you can get it. So what I do is I turn it up to the maximum to get the cast iron to where instantly when that potato hits there, it's sizzling. And then what I do is I back it off to a temperature with a latka will not burn. So I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in here and again I use a lesser grade of olive oil. 
from my lap then. Remember, this was a peasant's meal. You know, a hundred years ago when they did this, they used uh, bacon fat or, or some type of animal fat. And if you had to work in the fields all day long, that one latka would, would keep you going. Shot at my, uh, my stove burner. You can see the thing is red hot, and that's how I like to start it off with. Um, this way, when you, if you've got to be real careful with any type of oil, if you put any type of food in a warm oil, that whatever flavors in the oil, and it might not be a good flavor, goes right into your food. So what I like to do is I get my food red hot. My pan, I'm sorry, I get my pan red hot. And then into that, and I can almost see this in the pan. You can see the, the heat come through the pan. And then I'll turn it down to a, a lower temperature. So I'm, I'm going to cook my food, but I'm not going to burn it. So again, here's my latka. Hear it? And I'll get out of that, I'll get two decent latkes. Maybe just a little bit more. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my second pan, the smaller one, just make sure there's a little oil on the bottom of it. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to push down right on it. and leave it there. And what that will do is that will condense that latka to where it's thin, the size of a pancake, and it will also make sure that every little potato there gets done crisply. And that's, again, the whole secret to a latka. Now, simultaneously with that, I set my oven up to about 350, and I have another cast iron pan in there with ridges in it. So what I'm going to do is when I'm done with this, I'm going to throw my latka in the oven, that will continue to crisp that latka. So uh, this is just a little secret of mine. I happen to have a ridge pan. You don't have to have a ridge pan. You can use any type of pan you want to, as long as it's cast iron. So let's just give this two or three minutes, and then we'll flip it, and then I'll show you what the bottom of a properly cooked latka looks like. Okay, now I'm going to flip this bad boy. I like to always make sure it's loose because you can ruin the lamp. Give her a quick flip. Uh, see that? That's absolutely perfect. Again, I'm going to quickly make sure my big pan, my smaller pan, is clean. <clears throat> Put it down here. Press down, move it aside, and we'll give this a minute or two. Now let's go in the oven and let's take a quick look and see how that other lap is doing. Again, all this will do is look, oh, that bad boy will continue to crisp up. And there's some gravy in there. I'm just going to slide it over for the next one to come. And there we go. This will take about another minute, and again, when I flip them over, I don't, I just crush it quickly with the, with the smaller pan, and I, I, you can see there's moisture coming off that potato. You don't want a soggy latka. If you've got a greasy latka or soggy latka, it's no good. You might as well just, if you've got a dog, call the dog up and see if he likes your latkes.